Hi everybody and welcome to episode two of the Northwood Knitter. My name is Heather and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Northwood Knitter. Thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you have something to knit on because we're going to talk about knitting this episode. We're also going to be talking about sewing too. There's some sewing stuff in there. It is September 5th and I think fall is definitely here in the Yukon. I'm looking out my window and I am seeing some clouds. It's been rainy and kind of cloudy all day. It was a little bit sunny this afternoon, but I think fall is definitely here. The leaves are turning yellow. Yeah, it's definitely, it's not summer here anymore. It's definitely sweater weather. So you're probably wondering what sweater I'm wearing today. So let's get into what I'm wearing today. This is a Caitlin French pattern. It's called Yarrow and it is out of her book. I can't pronounce the name of it, but I'll put it in the show notes in the description. And this is a just a beautiful book. It's full of beautiful pictures. I think most of them are from Iceland, but then she's also got some, some really cool patterns in there. That's where this sweater comes from. So it's got a really simple construction, a really simple yoke, the only thing that I changed on this pattern was I did add some decreases on the sleeves just to make it a little bit slimmer because I think my sleeves ended up a little bit longer than what the pattern intended. Um, so I put in some, just some decreases to kind of snug it in a little bit around the cuffs. This is knit out of Homegrown from West Coast Color. I'm not sure what the color is, but Homegrown comes in natural sheep shades. So it's usually like a dark brown and then I think there might be a lighter color than this. I think they only do it once in a while. I think I picked up this yarn a couple years ago at Knit City. Um, it's pretty soft. But yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. All right, let's talk about some finished objects. It's been two weeks since my last episode and I've been busy. I did go to Vancouver last week. I just got home yesterday, but I did have a chance to finish a couple projects that I've been working on. The first one is one that I showed you guys last episode, and that was my Elizabeth Zimmerman seamless raglan sweater. So I just connected the sleeves to the body. Now I have a finished sweater. So I was a little bit worried that this sweater was turning out a little bit big, because once I started attaching the yoke, I think I made it a little bit long. And I think the sleeves, I felt like the sleeves were a little bit long, but I really, really like how it turned out. I like that it's a little bit slouchy. It's more of like a sweatshirt kind of fit. Um, so I'm really happy with it. The only thing that I might change is the collar. So I just did a, a single layer with one by one rib. And now I'm thinking that I want to redo it and kind of reinforce where the rib starts so that the neckline doesn't stretch out. And then I kind of want to do a double layer. So knit it double the length and then fold it over. I might change that, I'm not sure. But yeah, I blocked it all out and I, I love this sweater. I love, this is the raglan decreases that I did. So it makes this, this kind of cute single line of zigzags. I'll put a picture up here of what it looks like on. Yeah, you guys can see the finished project. The one thing that I didn't really pay attention to was the yoke. So in her instructions, she does say to measure your row gauge and like measure your armpit, like from your armpit to here, I think, and figure out when to start the decreases. And I didn't do that. <laughs> so I, I just kind of wung it, winged it and just kept going. So yeah, I, I wasn't sure about it, but I, I love it now. I think it's, I think it's a really comfy sweater. Wool of the Andes is the yarn that I used and I absolutely love that yarn. It's a very affordable worsted weight yarn. It comes in 50 gram skeins. I think I used 12, 12 balls for this one and I didn't have knots in any of any of the balls. So it's, it's just a great workhorse yarn. I definitely recommend Wool of the Andes. And if you're feeling adventurous, I definitely recommend uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's EPS system. Make your own sweater. It's, 
it's great because it's all it's all based on the yarn that you use and your gauge so you can kind of use any yarn for it as long as you know your gauge so my next finished object that i have is something that i've been working on for a little while now i think it's probably been about two years because i think i started these when i was still living in vancouver so i I had a moment where I looked at all my works in progress and uh, and I really wanted to finish one that I haven't touched in a while. So I saw these socks that I was working on and they're, they're ankle, ankle socks. So I'd finished one and I just started the second one, but I hadn't really been working on them. So I picked them up. I was like, I should just bang these out finish the second sock. Um, and I managed to do that in, I think it was about a day or two. These are the Heather socks from Lina issue eight. Uh, they were designed by Ash Alberg and I knit them out of Midnight Craving Sweet Sock, which is a 80% merino, 20% nylon yarn. The color I used was Beaches. You can kind of see it's got this lovely lace pattern. And they're just like a short little ankle sock. When I started these socks, I was living in Vancouver and I actually lived across the street from the beach. So I thought Heather socks, beach is yarn. And so these were kind of like my, my Vancouver socks. And then I moved away and then I finished them. So I've got two of these and they were, they were really fun to knit. Uh, they're a toe up sock, but they've got the, like the gusset, heel flap style heel. I'm not sure exactly what you call it because you don't really do a heel flap when you do toe up, but it's that style of heel. And I think, so the second sock that I did, I think turned out maybe a little slightly bigger than the first one. I don't know why. So that was uh, finished object number two. And that is one that I can take out of my work in progress basket. Yay. You know, have a sip of coffee because my throat is scratching. All right, let's talk about works in progress. The first work in progress I have for you guys is my hand spun socks that I showed you guys last episode. I haven't worked on them that much just because I've been busy working on working on my Heather socks. And then I also took the week off to go down to Vancouver to visit some friends. So I haven't worked too much on these, but I have worked on them. So I'm just about to start the heel on the first sock. And I wanted to show you guys how amazing these colors are looking. So I think it was right about there when I showed you guys. So yeah, the colors are just like these beautiful greens and blues and grays and marls. And I'm just so excited to keep knitting on these and find out what the next color, the next color is going to be. I'm about to start the heel on these. I had knit quite a bit farther than this because I was knitting these while I was on the plane coming back from Vancouver, I couldn't really try it on to figure out where the heel was gonna go. So I was like, oh, I'll just do an afterthought heel and I'm just gonna keep knitting. And then um, I was on Instagram today and I saw somebody was knitting a pair of socks from a sock blank and they used, so it was this gradient sock blank and they used different parts of the gradient for the different parts of the socks. The heel, they actually used the other end of the, the sock blank. And so then I got the idea, rather than doing an afterthought heel, I can just join the other end of the ball to do the heel, and then I can have a different kind of he different color heel without interrupting the, the color gradient on the foot. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not a huge fan of afterthought heels. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna use... So my camera shut off. Uh, my camera only likes to film about 20 minutes at a time and then it stops and then I don't notice so yay. I was talking about my uh, hand spun socks. I think what I'm going to do is just grab the other end of this ball and start working on the heel so that on the foot of it I don't have a jarring color change because it's kind of a gradient. I don't want to have like a, a line on the foot where I've stopped to do the heel and then started knitting again. So those are my hand spun socks. Um, I 
I haven't worked too much on them in the past two weeks, but I did a little tiny bit. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys these these amazing colors that are that are starting to happen. All right, so the next work in progress I have is I was talking last week that I really wanted to do a cardigan, and I had picked out the Big Love cardigan and picked up some yarn for it. So I have swatched for my Big Love cardigan. I'm using the Llama Natural Worsted from Estelle. I've done done my little done a swatch, so I haven't I haven't blocked my swatch yet. I don't know if I've reached gauge or not. The gauge given on the ball band is 20 stitches per four inches with a four and a half millimeter needle, um, whereas the pattern calls for 18 stitches. So I'm not, I'm not sure if I've gotten gauge. I had to use a four and a half millimeter needle for this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna block this out um, because it is in pattern. It's kind of this, this rib style, so it is drawing in a little bit. So I think if I block it and stretch it ever so slightly, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get gauge, and I do have enough yarn to make a bigger size. So I think what I might do is go for the bigger size. So I think that's the large, and then even if my knitting is a little bit tighter, it'll still be a little bit oversized which is what I want. But yeah, I'm loving the drape so far and I love this pattern. I am gonna block this out and then, and then I can get knitting. So like I mentioned earlier, I just got back from Vancouver and I did a little bit of shopping when I was down there. Um, so one, one of the things that I bought was this book called Texture. It's by Erica Knight. I've never actually seen this book or heard of this book before, so it was kind of cool to find this in the bookstore, and there's some really cool patterns in here that I, I can see myself making and wearing. Um, some of them are a little bit, I don't think I would make them, just because they're a little bit, a little bit out there for my style. Um, but I did find some patterns in here that I really like. And the first one is called Neighborhood. So that is this sweater right here. So it's this cozy oversized sweater with a bit of a texture pattern. Yeah, so I really liked that pattern. Um, and then I went to Wet Coast Bowls, which used to be my local yarn store. I used to live just down the road from there. And so I went to, I went to check it out and I got some yarn for the neighborhood sweater. So the yarn that I got is this Donegal Tweed from Ireland and it came on these big giant cones. They hadn't been wound up into balls yet, um, but I got, I got them to wind some up for me. So this is the Donegal Tweed and it's just this lovely oatmeal color but it's got like i don't know if you can see all these little flecks in there of different colors and it's just this really beautiful textured yarn it's really soft and squishy i believe it's merino and it's an air and weight so i have cast on another swatch <laughs> um i am not a swatch knitter usually i just kind of like go with it and hope that it works out but i want to do things I want to do things properly and have everything fit so I did do I did do a swatch and it's just a plain stockinette swatch but you can kind of see all the lovely flecks of color in it and it's just this beautiful texture so I think it's just gonna make an amazing sweater so yeah I picked up some of this yarn while I was in Vancouver and also the book texture it's just it's a beautiful book too um, I, I am definitely a sucker for, for pretty books and pretty yarn. <laughs> so that is my other work in progress that I'm just starting that was not... I had no intention last week of starting that project and then everything changed. So those are my two, my two works in, three works, three works in progress that I've been working on. And I have put them in my new knitting journal. So I was watching Lynn on Callan Yarns. She has a wonderful podcast from Wales in the UK. 
and I absolutely love her podcast. I actually got to meet her a couple years ago when I was in Vancouver at, when she came to visit Wet Coast Wolves and she's just she is so lovely and I was watching one of her episodes and she was talking about her knitting notes notebook that she got from Lina. I am not a knitting note person. I don't know who I've become. I'm doing gauge swatches. I've got a knitting notebook. This is totally unlike me. But I started using my knitting, my new knitting notebook. I put in an order for Lina. I got the, the summer 2021 issue. I got another book, but really I wanted the knitting notebook. And so it's just this lovely mustard color. It's got this cloth cover. It's absolutely lovely. And I have put, I've started putting some notes for, for my new projects that I cast on today. And uh, there's room on this side. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the ball band uh, from my yarn in there and then maybe put a little sample in there. Um, but it's just, again, like I said, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for pretty books. Um, but yeah, this is my new knitting notebook that, I, that I've started using. I don't tend to use Ravelry so much anymore. And I think that kind of started when they did the site redesign. There was a, quite a bit of controversy surrounding that and I I just I don't really use it that much anymore I'll buy occasionally I'll buy a pattern off there if I can't find it on a designer's website um, and then I don't don't really use it for for project notes anymore either so I didn't really have anywhere that I put my project notes so I think I'm going to start just doing it in my knitting notebook and just have like a hard copy of it rather than using it Ravelry. I know some people had issues with like migraines and seizures and while I didn't have those issues, I did find when I was using the website that my eyes did feel kind of weird. I don't know if it was like a, a placebo thing, but I did find that using Ravelry just, it wasn't the same and it did hurt my eyes a little bit. And I, I don't know if it was like, the contrast or the colors that they used or there was something about it that just kind of made me feel uncomfortable and then I think partly their reaction to people criticizing them kind of left a bad taste in my mouth as well so anyways tangent over <laughs> those are my works in progress now let's get into future projects I feel like I shouldn't be starting future pro I shouldn't Talk about future projects just because I've now cast on two projects and I have so many works in progress. But I did buy another book while I was in Vancouver. I did buy a knitting book, which I haven't bought knitting books in a while. So I think I kind of deserved some knitting books. I don't know. The other book that I picked up, I got this from Wet Coast Wools. And this is Moon and Turtle. And this is by Kiyomi and Sachiko Bergen. And I absolutely love this book. Um, there's some very cute patterns in here. I love this sweater that's on the cover. It's super, super cute. Um, but I think what caught my eye, especially living up here in Whitehorse, is this one. So it's this really cute hood and it also has an option to do a face mask part that's attached to it and I think that'll be perfect for winter up here um because it, get, it gets cold in northern Canada it can get to like m minus 40 here sometimes in the winter and there's usually quite a bit of snow I think I'm gonna make one um it is it calls for a worsted weight I have some two ply from custom woolen mills from some sweaters that I've done in the past. I have some leftover from that. So I might use that, but chances are I'll probably just buy more yarn. That's one of the future projects that I'm gonna do. I don't know when I'm gonna cast that on. Uh, we'll see how we'll see how my sweaters my sweaters go. Other future I have so many plans. I have so many future projects that I want to work on. When I was in Vancouver, I went to one of my favorite fabric stores, and that is Dress So. My hotel was literally a couple blocks away, so I could not go to Dress So, but I did have a project in mind or projects in mind 
uh, before I went. So I didn't go crazy, although I could have. I definitely could have. For a while now, I wanted to do some sewing, but I didn't bring my sewing machine when I moved up here. So I'm currently sewing it down in BC just because if I brought my sewing machine, I'd have to bring all my sewing supplies and that takes up a lot of space. And I basically moved in my vehicle. I packed up my vehicle. I put as much stuff in there as I could and my sewing machine just didn't fit. Why did I go to dress sew and buy some fabric? Because I've decided to try my hand at hand sewing. I've kind of wanted to do this uh, ever since I watched an episode of Bernadette Banner hand sewing a shirt. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to try doing that. So I bought some of this linen. It's 100% linen in this just natural color. And I am going, I want to sew myself just a really nice, simple, plain uh, linen shirt. Uh, so that is one project that I am going to attempt. We'll see how long it takes me. So my intention was just to get some, some linen like this. Um, and that's all I was going to get. But then I also did see this, which is some of this, some really nice, it's a hemp cotton, I guess, ch chambray. So I got some of this because I'm going to do, I kind of want to try doing another shirt. So we'll see how it goes, but I think these are going to be hand sewn shirts. And then I also got some, this is a cotton linen just canvas. So it's a bit thicker than the other linen that I got. I think this one I want to hand sew um, some Christmas presents. There is a YouTube channel that I started following. They do some really nice hand sewn bags and accessories. Um, and I kind of got the idea to do a wine bottle carrier maybe out of this. So I think that's what it might be, but I just kind of wanted just some plain fabric that I can do just some hand sewn gift kind of stuff. And yeah, so those are more for future projects. <laughs> um, so hopefully because I'm talking about them on the podcast, they will come to fruition. I hope, fingers crossed. So. Those are all the projects that I've been working on this week. Now, I thought I'd take a little time to just talk about some random chatter stuff. First of all, I want to acknowledge my podcasting partner here, my Monstera. On my Instagram, I posted a picture of him. I think it's a him. And I just said a plant needs a name. So I had a couple people suggest names. I really liked Stephanie's name that she suggested. So I think we're going to call him Jemaine. I wanted to show you that uh, Jemaine unfurled a new leaf the other day. Um, unfortunately, it happened while I was gone. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got a new leaf. It's, it's still kind of half rolled up. Here. But yeah, he's he's growing pretty well, and uh, yeah, I wanted to introduce you to Jermaine. So last episode, uh, there were some questions about who I am and where I'm from and what I do. So I thought I'd go into a little bit more about me. I live in Whitehorse in the Yukon in northern Canada. I have lived here since February, but I've been working up here for about for about the past two years. I'm a geophysicist in mining exploration. So basically what that means is I collect data trying to figure out uh, what kind of minerals are underneath the surface without actually digging up the earth. So that's why I'm away for long periods of time. Sometimes my jobs last a couple weeks, sometimes more. And then when I'm home, I have a lot of downtime. So in my downtime, I like to knit. I've been knitting for, oh gosh, probably about, seriously about 10 years now, but I've, I learned how to knit before that. If there's any other questions that you guys want to know about where I live, what I do, anything like that, leave a comment down below and ask away. I love reading your guys' comments and what you guys are working on, where you're watching from, and anything else you guys want to talk about. So leave a comment down below. If you like this video, throw me a like. And you can even subscribe to this video if you don't want to miss the next episode. 
which I can't guarantee it's gonna be, I'm gonna be able to post on a regular schedule. So it'll come out when it comes out, I guess. Good work keeps me busy, like I said before. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video.